What is good, popper people? I am Brian Cook, and today we are playing Mogwarts, better known as Goblin Combo. This deck is really sweet, and you can tell by the name that it's based around the card first day of class that you can see right here. I finally figured out how to zoom. Uh, Moto updated and changed, I'm sorry. But we have the zoom down. So first day of class, it's a two mana instant, one colorless and one red mana. And it says that whenever a creature enters the battlefield this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it and it gains haste. And then it has the mechanical learn where you can get a lesson card from your sideboard. So we have this introduction to prophecy here that is a lesson. It's essentially just a three mana preordained, kind of expensive, but when you have infinite mana, it won't matter. Wait, infinite mana? You heard me correctly. So with first day of class and this putrid goblin that's persist, so if putrid goblin were to die and re-enter the battlefield, the negative one, negative one counter from persist and the plus one, plus one counter from first day of class completely wash each other away. You can't have both on your creature, so it just evaporates, doesn't exist. Well, what if you had a way to make your putrid goblin die on its own? Well, with Skirk Prospector, here we do. So you sacrifice a goblin to make red mana. So you could sacrifice the putrid goblin an infinite number of times, making an infinite number of red mana. So when you have infinite red mana, this introduction of prophecy over here is actually pretty easy to cast. So that's really sweet. Uh, well, what can you do with infinite red mana? Well, there is a brand new card, and by brand new, I mean a card that was downshifted in Double Masters. It used to be a rare in M19, and now it's a common. I'm talking about Dark Dweller Oracle. So once again, one in a red mana, so two mana total for a 2-2 Goblin Shaman creature. One mana, sacrifice a creature, exile the top of your library, you may play that card this turn. So this means that after you've made infinite mana, you can play your entire deck. How busted is that? The Goblin deck just got a card that allows it to play its entire deck in Double Masters. It's bananas. I can't believe that they actually downshifted this. It, it makes no sense to me. So that replaces a card like Flame Wake Invoker that you used to play that was just a three mana creature that you could spend eight mana, eight mana, that's a ton, and deal five damage. So this doesn't actually win the game on its own. But what you could do with it is cast a whole bunch of other goblins in your deck, like Goblin Matron that can also find your combo pieces, and Mass Vandal, and a bunch of other stuff and attack. Alternatively, you can use Makeshift Munitions here, this enchantment that's also one in a red. It's a theme in this deck. But you could sacrifice an artifact or a creature and deal one. So re the most probable outcome of a game is that you're going to use Goblin Dark Dweller to find the Makeshift Munitions and then deal infinite damage with the munitions. So this is a combo deck. It's not a goblin deck where you attack with a ton of creatures. It is a goblin combo deck, and it's really sweet. You get to play this sweet card, Deadly Dispute, from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms that also allows you to sacrifice your creatures, draw two cards, make a treasure. A lot of people joke that this is Pauper's Ancestral Recall, especially when you have things like Chromatic Star, Icar Wellspring, extra artifact lands with Volta Whispers and the bridge. It's just bananas. So everything else in this deck is sort of a consistency tool or a combo piece or things like that. In this sideboard, we have a couple copies of Dress. These come in to complement the main deck copies of Dress for matchups where your opponent has a lot of removal. Then we have this Gorilla Shaman for the affinity matchup, just for blowing up their lands, all that good stuff. We have a Kark Clan Shaman to hit non-flying creatures. When you first look at this card, you often think that it's for fairies, but everything in fairies flies, so the Shaman doesn't really hit that those matchups. What you're really looking for with the Kark Clan Shaman is things like elves, you know, that sort of stuff. And then we have copies of Lightning Bolt. Those are primarily for the Mono Red Prowess deck with Monastery Swiss Spear and Kill Fiend and all those good stuff to slow the game down. You're actually a very, very fast deck. This deck can turn three, turn fours pretty consistently, but that deck is just a little bit faster, so we want some removal spells in there. Pyroblast is for the Fairies matchups. Pretty plain, simple, cut and dry. The sideboard doesn't have a lot of cute stuff in it. It's just looking to win the game. I'm ready to play some Pauper. I hope you are. I'm just going to head on over to that first match. I hope you join me, and uh, I'll see you in a bit.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one. I'm pretty excited about this league. I always love when I play it, but I don't play it that often. Only because it's not a storm deck. It feels a little bit off brand for the channel, but I love this deck. I own it in paper. I riffle shuffle it all the time. I even just taught a coworker how to play it a little bit. So I'm a big fan. I need to upgrade my paper deck to this list, but I love it. Pretty excited. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so we're in the first match. I'm going to keep this hand. It's a fine. So we have first day of class, which is the toughest part of the combo to get. And then we have Skirk Prospector. So we're literally only missing Putrid Goblin here. I'm going to lead off on just Vault and a Chrome Star. So that way I can sacrifice the Chromatic Star to the Deadly Dispute to help find that Putrid Goblin. Pass the turn. All right, so they're on fairies. Take a draw. Unearth. I'm just going to cast this dispute immediately, trying to make sure that it resolves. Auto yield to the chromatic star trigger. We'll draw three and make a treasure. Polluting. All right, no land is a little bit unfortunate. Let's pass the turn, see if I can fix that on the following turn. All right, so now they're holding open Spell Stutter Sprite and they pass the turn. We'll take a draw. There's our land. I think I'm just going to play this nice and slow and play an Ecker Wellspring and just don't play into their Spell Stutter Sprite. So now we have the payoff for infinite mana as well because we drew the Dark Dweller Oracle. We just have to assemble the Putrid Goblin Skirk Prospector combo. All right, the Icker Wellspring resolves, will auto yield. And now we have land four for the following turn. I love that. Basically, by playing the Icker Wellspring, we're making sure that the Spell Stutter Sprite isn't relevant, but neither is a Lightning Bolt. And that's what I wanted to achieve this turn instead of playing into our opponent's removal. So they're casting Brainstorm. There's a chance here that they have the Ash Barons to get a perfect Brainstorm. In Legacy, it would be a Fetch Land, but those aren't really that playable here. Some people do play Evolving Wild-type lands, but they're not as good as an Ash Barons, especially in this situation. And they do have the Ash Barons. Okay. All right, so now it's the fairy player's turn. They have land three. They just picked it up with the barons. And they pass. Okay, we'll take a draw. Another land. I love it. I'm just going to refuse to play into the spell stutter. I think if this resolves, I'm most likely just playing the oracle. Triggers. And we drew the other oracle, so that actually makes this a pretty easy decision. All right, pass the turn. Is this a removal spell? I consider that to be a victory, because this is one lightning bolt that's not going to interrupt my combo turn. And there's the spell stutter. So I played around both of these cards incredibly well this game with my uh, sequencing here. Land four for the opponent. So usually when your opponent flashes in a Spell Stutter Sprite, they are looking to create a creature at instant speed that then can be returned to their hand with one of their Ninjutsu creatures. So there's Ninja of the Deep Hours. There's also a new Ninja from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I'm blanking on the name right now, but we'll see it in this league at some point. And they just pass. Okay, draw. I'm going to attempt a Faithless Looting here and see if this resolves. Their opponent has five cards in hand. And it does resolve. 
Let's get rid of the bridges. Play a vault. Let's try another Goblin Dark Dweller. Pass the turn. And this Dark Dweller gets to live. You love to see it. So the attack will fall to 18 life. I cannot block. Unless they have a Nijitsu. But I think if they had one, they likely would have done it last turn. Okay. No blocks. And here we see the ninja, the deep hours. So th they'll connect. I'll fall the uh, 17 life, not 18. And they'll draw a card. And that, they now have a spell starter sprite in hand to disrupt me. Land three. Okay. I'm going to attempt to resolve this deadly dispute, sacrificing one of these Icar Wellspring. So I'm going to guarantee draw one off the Wellspring trigger. And then we get to see if the Deadly Dispute resolves. All right, so the Icar Wellspring trigger is resolved. What about the Deadly Dispute? So they allowed it to resolve. They did tap an island and then decided against it. I'm going to attempt another Faithless Looting here. I could use the one in the graveyard for flashback, but I'm just trying to be the most mana efficient that I can. Definitely discarding the mountain. Hmm. I could discard the carnarium. And that could possibly create a window. Alright, I think I'm going to do that. Let's try playing the munitions. If this resolves, we're in an incredibly good spot here. And it looks like they're going to counterspell. Okay. So we have an opening if I can find the goblin, but I'm over 33% of the way through the deck and haven't found it yet. So I can flashback looting and try to go off with just three mana. I'm sorry, two mana. Or I can just cycle the chromatic star. I could also sack the oracle right now. Let's see if we can draw into it. I'll add a red. Nope. I think I'm just going to flash back uh, alluding here. Okay. So we're almost halfway through our deck and I have not found the goblin or a goblin matron to help find it. And I'm going to pass the turn. There's no point in attacking with the Dark Dweller when our opponent has a Ninja of the Deep Hours in play because we want to shut off their card advantage created by the Ninja. They cast Brainstorm. And a Lightning Bolt. So they want to get that card advantage from the Ninja. They still have three open mana. So they're holding open Spell Stutter Sprite and possibly even one other card. So they're going to redraw one of the cards they put back with Brainstorm. All right, they've drawn their card. Our opponent's playing at a very slow pace of play. If this ends up being three games, I could see them timing out. Drew another land. Let's attempt to deadly dispute sacrificing the Icar Wellspring. We're guaranteed to draw one card off this. There's a Matron. And another first day. Okay, uh, I think we can force our way through here. I'm just trying to map this out. So it's... Alright, so we know that our opponent has a spell stutter. I guess I should do the easiest thing first and play the prospector to see if this resolves through the spell stutter. Because if it doesn't, I, I can discard the Goblin Matron to the first day of class and use the other mode of learn, which is to rummage, discard, and draw, and then I could re unearth the Goblin Matron. Okay, so now we'll play the Matron. So the Matron resolves. Yes. Go get the Putrid Goblin. So, we know that they have Spell Stutter. 
I believe I can play two copies of first day and win. So I'm going to use this and sacrifice the Goblin Matron. So I have a red. Or am I just wrong here? I might just be wrong. All right, I'm going to sacrifice the Goblin. And with this trigger on the stack, I will cast first day of class because it's an instant. And they had counter spell. Okay. So this is going to come back. I can. What's the line? If I sack the putrid goblin and the prospector, I get two red. I can first day and then I can unearth, but then I'm short one mana from winning so i think the best thing to do would be to try again next turn but we know that they also have a spell stutter yeah i'm just one mana short all right i have to pass or at least i think i do one mana short yeah okay they have six cards in hand. Two copies of Counterspell have been used. I will block. So we know that they have Spell Starter Sprite. And five unknowns. Sorry that I keep on repeating the Spell Starter Sprite thing. I'm just trying to make sure that I remember. All right. Augur Velas. They pick up a Fire Ice. Cost two mana, so they have to pick and choose between Fire Ice or the Spell Stutter. Cast a Brainstorm. Okay. They do have a Land Drop. They make the Land Drop. Draw. That was a good one. Duress. And they're paying costs. And they decide to counterspell the duress. That's interesting. Well, I think shields are down and that I should go for it here. First day. They have dispel! Main deck dispel! Wow! That's such a beating. Okay, that was the only card that could have beaten me there. I could have paid for spell peers. Roll flashback eluding. That was so rough. Discard the prospector. We know that they have fire ice in hand, so this one's going to die. Wow. I thought I had it. Just have to pass the turn. So they're attacking. I'm just going to take it. I need this Prospector, and just throwing it away to stop them from drawing a card isn't a winning strategy. Another copy of Augur of Bolas. Scred. Okay. So they have Fire Ice, Scred, three unknowns. Draw. It's another Matron. Let's try playing her. Triggers. Yes. Putrid Goblin. I think I'm just going to pass the turn. It's a pretty good opportunity for them to cast the Fire Ice here because it does hit two creatures. Okay, and then... Let's cast Deadly Dispute, sacrificing the Goblin Matron. They have another Spell Stutter. Yep. Saw that coming. I don't know how much I like our odds for this game. They're down to three, but they get a draw step plus Ninja, so they'll be up to five cards this turn, and they still have a Scred in hand. Yeah, I'm taking a bunch of damage here. We're at five. 
Draw. Well, that was a good top deck, but does it resolve? And it resolved. Wow. Okay. Um, let's cast the Unearth on Goblin Matron. Spell Stutter. It's a lot of spell stutters. Um, yeah. Can I win? Or can I live? So, I think we have to kill the ninja. And there's no point in leaving the goblin back as a blocker when we know our opponent has scred. I'd rather keep my lands. Alright, target this. Sacrificing the goblin. Target. And we have to pay one. Sacrificing a vault. So this gives us a turn, but I'm feeling pretty far out of this because I can't beat a pair of one threes. Yep. And they have fire, so we are dead. And spell stutter number four. Pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they got us. I mean, the dispel single handedly won them game number one. It's worth noting they're down to 11.44 on clock. So they could time out, but we're not going to play to that. We're going to try to win. And I think we want to actually get rid of Duress in this matchup just because the creatures are honestly what matters more. And I think Lightning Bolt's really for the Blitz decks, but also has some application here. We'll get rid of the Mast Vandal. I don't think that's really what we want to be doing. And we're still at 65. So we need to find some other cuts. I think that in a matchup like this, you don't want the card at disadvantage from Faithless Looting, so we can get rid of that. And now we're at 63. Let's get rid of a couple copies of Ecker Wellspring. And a Chromatic Star. Let's try this out. All right, game number two, we're on the play. No red source, but I do think that this is a keep. Opponent has taken a mulligan. All right, swamp past the churn. Island. Fairy seer. Okay. They kept two cards on top. That's scary. We did not draw a red source. We're going to play this putrid goblin and pass the churn. Ash Barons. Into an Augur of Veloss. So no ninja. I do like to see that. They pick up a counter spell. And they're attacking. I fall to 19. Draw. Not a red source. So my options are do I play Crumbstar or do I cycle the Unearth? I think I'm going to cycle Unearth. Hit, hit, hit. No hit. Pass the turn. Preordain. They put two on top of the preordain. Alright, they're getting in with the fairies here. No blocks. No ninja. Alright, I am not going to play in a spell stutter, so I'm just going to cycle this copy of Unearth as well. This is brutal. Just pass the turn. And step spell setter spray, you got it. Cycling Ash Baron so they can go get a red source, and they do. Attacking for two, I'll fall to 16. Draw. Gotta be kidding me here. Cycle. Okay, so we found a red source. So it's a little bit slow, but it does tap for red. Move to discard. When it flashes in another copy of Spell Stutter. Alright, I think we want to get rid of the Lightning Bolt plan. I think we're just off it. We're not going to be able to control the creature threats anymore, so don't bother trying to play that game. 
Now they have Relic to stop the combo game. Oh, that's brutal. Okay. That was very punishing. So I'll take three down to 13. They have three cards in hand. Draw. Chromatic Star. Hmm. Three cards. Let's play a Matron. Counterspelled. You got it. Pass the turn. They have two cards in hand. I mean, how we win this game is we somehow get them to tap low and force a combo window. But the issue is I'm very far away from that being a thing. So we'll take three. I, I'm going to go to ten. Okay. They have a ninja. You have a ninja. So if we draw Prospector here, we could actually go for it. We did not. Let's try this again. So this resolves. I guess I could have cycled the Chrome Star to see if I drew into it. Hmm. So I'm trying to think here. Let's say hypothetically I play Skirt Prospector. Let's say they try to spell stutter it. Let's say they get really greedy. I filter for a red. Pyroblast. Sack this, sack this. That could actually work. Let's hope that they try to get greedy and spell stutter. They did not. Okay, I'm going to pass the turn then. Their paying costs. Scred. Um, I could force them to use the relic here. I mean, it would eat up my first day, but it's a choice that I have. All right, so we're going to allow this to happen, and let's see if they try to use the relic here. They did not. Okay. Seven minutes on clock. And I'm at nine. I'm going to filter for a red. Picker will spring. Let's attempt to kill the ninja. And I'll take three. I go to six. All right, draw the lightning bolt. Icker wellspring. Draw. Hmm. Let's get in there. I think I'm just going to pass. They activate relic. Remove pyro. Greedy. Okay, so they're giving me a pretty good window here. Sure. We need another putrid goblin. They have five cards. Gorilla shaman. Okay. I have one land that they can blow up. Lightning bolt the auger. Or maybe I just want to lightning bolt the spell stutter because I can block the auger to buy time. Probably better. All right, they have four cards. If I draw another putrid goblin off the top, we could do it. Draw an earth. That actually does it. So we will sacrifice the putrid goblin. Let's attempt to play first day. Oh, it doesn't work because I pyroblast and then they red blast me. Uh, so I shouldn't have sacrificed the goblin. Because now I just lose to dispel or blue elemental blast or hydro blast. Yep. 
I don't know why I was thinking that I was going to win that counter war. That was just a waste of resources. Um, even if I cycled into a pyroblast, that doesn't do anything here. Ooh, they stacked it wrong so that they didn't get a spell stutter. So I can rebuy the Putra Goblin now and create a blocker for the Augur. Let's get in there. Fairy Seer. I'm dead to a Lightning Bolt, so five minutes on their clock is plenty of time. One on top, one on the bottom. And another Fairy Seer. Yeah, it's really good. They have one card in hand. So our best draw is like another first day, but I'd also love a makeshift munitions to blow up their board. So they'll get in for one and we'll go to three. Yep. And then I'm dead to the three creatures in the air on the following turn. Draw. That doesn't do it. Chromatic star. Add a red. Okay. We drew a land. Uh, we have no play to make. I'm not going to waste time making them attack. Unfortunately, we're starting this league off 0 and 1, but this was a pretty interactive matchup. We just didn't happen to get there. Sort of a bummer, but it is what it is. All right, I'll see you in the second match. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Time to bounce back. We're on the draw. We've opened up a pretty easy keep here. So we'll do that and uh, let's play some Magic. All right, looks like we have the Is It deck once again. Play the bridge past the churn. Land two. Okay, so we drew an untapped land that allows us to not play directly into Spell Stutter Sprite, so I'm just going to pass. Frantic Inventory, okay. Land three. Let's try this Chrome Star. Play the Carnarium, picking up the Vault of Whispers. Pass the turn. Consider, so this is not fairies. This is likely, is it control? Maybe some Serpentine Curve in there? Six cards. Let's try a Goblin Matron. She's just a matronly goblin. What harm could she do? Just allow her to resolve already. Come on. Well, she's been counterspelled. We will pass the turn. Is it charm? You draw two, discard two. Looking a little bit more like curve, and it is curve. They discarded a fling. Reordain. Consider. They have five cards in hand. I'm going to lead on this duress. Counterspell. Okay, so that gives me an opportunity here to play Deadly Dispute, Sacrificing the Chromatic Star. If, I mean, if we got really lucky, maybe we could do something, but pretty unlikely. We did not. Let's play another Chromatic Star. And another dispute. I just love drawing cards. There's the Putrid Goblin. And another Duress. They can't kill me from what they have here, so I'm going to sit on the Duress. But I will cast this Faithless Looting. It's card disadvantage, but we'd have to discard anyway. So discard a Mountain and the Ecker Wellspring. And we are ready to go next turn. We have a protected win with Duress. Easy peasy. Preordain. 
Evolving Wilds, and they have four in hand. Draw another first day. So they have two copies of Scred. I mean, one is just as good as two here. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Pretty sure I can win through that. Play the Prospector. Goblin. Sacrifice the Goblin. First day. So they can cast Scred here, but I can make another red mana and then we just win. Alright, so they sacrifice or they cast the Scred, I will sacrifice the Prospector, make a red mana. They will use the Wilds. Which can get a red source if they so choose, but it comes into play tapped. We'll grab the Introduction to Prophecy out of our sideboard with the Learn side of First Day of Class. Now the Putrid Goblin will come back. First Day triggers, the counters wash off each other. We'll tap this for a black mana and return the Skirk Prospector to the battlefield. So now we have infinite red mana by sacrificing this Goblin. We'll auto yield here. Okay. We can keep on doing this, making a ton of red mana. All right, so now let's cast Introduction to Prophecy. We found a Goblin Matron. So with Matron, we can go get the Goblin that, or the, what is it called? I'm trying to remember. Uh, goblin Dark Dweller. And then we can cast our entire library. So Goblin Matron. All right, so Matron happens. Yes. Go get the... Let's grab another Goblin Matron. Why not? Make it a little bit easier. It's less damage in the long run. Play another Matron. Triggers. Yes. Go grab another Matron. More red mana. Matron. Yes. Grab the Dark Dweller Oracle. And so now what we have to do is just make a ton of red mana and then use the Goblin Dark Dweller Oracle. All right, our opponent has seen the writing on the wall and has picked it up. But we got 10 power on the board, so we would have needed 10 more. This would have been 13. You can also just win by attacking with enough goblins, uh, which is what I was building up to there, so you don't have to use the munitions a million times. But pretty sweet, we got it. Game two versus the Serpentine Curve Fling deck. So I think we want to board up a lot of protection spells here. Lightning Bolt's not very good, but these pair of Duress are certainly good. So we're at 66 cards. I think we could probably get rid of the Masked Vandal. Get rid of the Lootings. Now we're at 63 once again. I still think these cards are a little lackluster in the blue matchup, so let's board those out. Call it a day. I'm sure some, uh, like, pauper goblins expert like Hamuda is watching this, and they're like, Bryant, what are you doing? This is not the board plan. I am sorry. I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy that likes to play combo decks, so bear with me. I don't have all the answers. I'm learning as I go, and hopefully you learn something along the way, too. Maybe. I don't know. Game two, and we've opened up a no lander. If this was like 1994, we could get a free mulligan. Not the case. We're going to six. Ay, ay, ay. I don't even think this hand is good. Let's go to five. Way better than our six. We'll keep this. We're going to get rid of these two and just look to get back into this game using deadly disputes. Turn one forward. Chromatic Star, pass the turn. Land, and they're passing. So I'm not going to play into any counter spells with their deadly disputes. Instead, I'm just going to cast the Wellspring and pass. Really? That's worth a counter spell, huh? Okay. Nope, I will not pay. That was aggressive. That card's not even good. Land three. Pieces of the puzzle. 
They revealed a serpentine curve out of that. Good deal. So now we can untap and play the Deadly Dispute. Let's draw three cards. One, two, three. Pass the turn. No need to sacrifice the treasure token to play duress. Just be patient. That's a waste of resources. And they're passing five cards. Draw. I'm going to play the munitions to see if it will eat up a counter spell. I don't actually care about this card. And it resolved. Pass the turn. Frantic inventory, you got it. Land five. Draw. First day. Let's try to start a fight here. Dress. Double curve. Okay, their hand is not very good. I think I'll just pass. I wonder if I should cycle the unearth on their end step, though. Or if I need to keep it because of the lightning bolt, I'm not sure. Alright, so they've played the island. And they're choosing to not play a curve here. Draw another land. I think I'll just pass. I will respond to this. So, let's, uh, whoa. I didn't realize I tapped all of my mountains. Undo. Deadly Dispute sacrificing the treasure token will draw two. And that was a good one. So now I can Pyroblast the Frantic Inventory, stop them from drawing two cards, and I still have this Pyroblast for something that they may have. So this is a little baby curve. You got it. They have another curve in hand and a Lightning Bolt. We're just a Skirk Prospector away. Hmm. Let's play the Carnarium. Just past the turn, I think. Maybe I'm supposed to play the Putrid Goblin and just let them bolt it? I don't know. I'll take 6 going to 14. You have another curve. They have Lightning Bolt and one unknown. Let's draw. Another first day. I'm going to see if I can trick them into doing a misplay here. I'm going to play out the Putrid Goblin. And let's cast first day of class. So something I could do is just discard the bridge and draw instead of getting the... Uh, whatever it's called. Introduction to Annihilation. Introduction to Prophecy. That's what it is. Introduction to Prophecy. So instead of getting that out of the sideboard, I can discard the bridge and draw, which could theoretically mean that I could win this turn if I drew well. Will they respond with the bolt? They do decide to bolt the goblin. Okay. So if that's the case, I definitely want the introduction. And we'll pass. And I'm going to kill a fractal token in their upkeep. Got to slow down the clock a little bit. Augur a Bolas. They choose a blue elemental blast. So they have a blue blast in hand. I have to find a way through that. Block. Well, Introduction to Prophecy is a colorless card, so we have that going on. Let's cast it. Those are both very good. I would like both of these. Let's sacrifice the treasure and draw two. All right, a lot of lands. Um, let's bring back the Putrid Goblin. And then I'm going to play the bridge. So next turn we can try to win again. But it has to be another introduction of prophecy, I believe, to find the 
Prospector. A little bit flooded. I will take six. I go to eight. They have two cards in hand, one of which is a blue elemental blast. Alright, so they just showed us a land for no reason. I mean, I think this is our window. Another land. So I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So by the time I'm done casting first day pyroblast introduction, I'll have two mana left. First day. They blast. I mean, I could also just blast the fractal token and buy a lot of time. I'm not going to do that, though. Let's counter the blast. First day, let's get introduction. Cast it. Double duress. Ugh, yikes. Bottom. Bottom. No! Ugh. That's so rough. I guess I can deal them a free one damage here. Pass the turn. That was rough. So many lands. And they drew frantic inventory, so the ancestral recall off the top rope. I think this game's over. So if I had taken the line to kill the fractal token, they would have ripped ancestral. So I think it was right to go there, but unfortunately, we just never found uh, Goblin Matron or Skirk Prospector. They're attacking. I will block the auger. If you have a fire ice or a bolt, I'm dead. It's fine. Sure. All right. Do I even want to look at the top card? Deadly Dispute into the win. Yep. Sweet. Game three. Resubmit. Game three, run the play. Sure. Lands. Bridge go. Board. I'm just going to play it slow. Like, you could cast the Deadly Dispute here or the Munitions. I just don't think that those are good plays. Playing out the Goblin early just means that it dies to a Lightning Bolt or um, an Is It Charm, something like that. I'm just not interested in those plays. Another land off the top is not welcome. Not welcome one bit. They cycle on Ash Barons. Land three into Augur of Bolas. No cards. Draw. This seems like a decent spot for a duress. They can't counterspell it. Scred, Lightning Bolt, Blue Blast, Counterspell, Pieces. I mean, this is a pretty good hand. I think we just take the counterspell. Play a land. Use your goblin. If they want to burn two removal spells on this, I think we allow that to happen. All right, they do not use a removal spell. They drew a land into another auger. Except preordain. Draw another land. Why are you like this deck? Play the Carnarium, pick up the mountain, pass the turn. They cast Preordain. Play another island. They have five cards, so we know four of them. I will gladly block. I'll take one. 19. All right, let's draw Chromatic Star. All right, I'm going to just bet here that their last card isn't a counter spell. So if I get punished, I get punished. Oh, <laughs> brutal. Oh, that was that was a rough one. 
Yikes. That hurt. Pieces of the puzzle. I think they've got me here. I'm just too far behind. Our hand is all lands. They disc they choose blue blast counter spell. Block. Draw. First day. Let's try playing the munitions. Prospector. What are you thinking about? So I'll play Carnarium, picking up the mountain. Pass the turn. Hope that they try to get greedy with like a frantic inventory. All right, so now we're in their main phase. They play a land. I just don't think I can win this. They just have to not tap mana for the rest of the game and keep attacking. Block. Okay, draw. Let's attack for three. All right, it looks like they're taking it, and they do. Pass the turn. Reordain. So we still know five of their six that they currently have, but they're about to go up to seven once this preordain resolves. They kept two on top. That's scary. And they want to race, so we're going to 15. Draw. Unearth. Interesting. I wonder if I could create a window if they try to bolt. Pass the turn. Granic inventory, you got it. So you might be thinking that I could try to go for it here. They have three interactive spells up. For if some reason they try to like bolt here, I could respond with first day. They blast, I blast. So if I first day, they blast, I blast. I think that doesn't work. Um, I need to think about this. So I spent two mana, tap two mountains, cast first day. They play blue elemental blast. I blast, they blast. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Uh, let's see if I can cycle the unearth into another pyroblast. Okay. Does this resolve? All right, so they didn't respond to the Deadly Dispute. I was hoping that they'd respond to the Bursa's Trigger, and they didn't. Yeah, they knew better. So I can now Pyroblast the Counterspell. Draw two. And I cannot combo in here. All right. So one Counterspell, one Blast down. Another frantic inventory for two. They have seven cards. They're getting in for one, so we'll go to 14. I feel like I missed a window on the last turn. Picker Wellspring. Trigger draw, unearth. Let's try a Goblin Matron. Blue Blast the Matron, really? And they still have six cards. Them holding open double removal is actually really difficult. Let's try to get back to Matron. The Matron happens. Yes. Grab the Putrid Goblin. Play the goblin. Whoops. Undo. Play the goblin. So I could first stay here, um, but then they have another bolt in hand. Sure. Pass the turn. 
Sub six cards. Yay, yay, yay. Pieces of the puzzle. So they picked up another bolt, a frantic inventory. So they kept bolt inventory. So they have two bolts open and a draw three. Draw another matron. Yes. Grab Dark Dweller Oracle. I think I like that. Hmm. Let's play the Oracle. Another Blue Blast. That's a bummer. Pass the turn. Inventory. There's no point in me casting first day here because I can't win. In fact, like I'm pretty sure I've been out of this game for multiple turns. Another Augur. Blast number four, I believe. Relic. Yeah, I'm, I'm just out. Draw. Another first day. Pass the turn, I guess. I mean, I don't have a Prospector, so I can't go for it. Pieces of the puzzle. So they found a curve. And another frantic inventory. So they can draw four off that inventory. Oh, they kept preordaining over the frantic inventory. That's odd. Two cards on the bottom of the preordain. Draw. The Vault of Whispers. I mean, my time's running out here, so I think I'm just going to cast a first day and see what happens. We know that they have a blue blast. Um, guess another first day. All right, the goblin has died. First day. Scred fizzles. First day. We're just gonna grab another introduction. Cast it. The duress actually seems pretty good here. Let's see if they'll counterspell the second introduction. No point in taking the unearth. Duress. See if I can hit the curve. They have double curve. All right, let's take the blue blast then. They play land. You have a huge fractal token. I have two copies of first day left in my deck. We will take three. I go to 11. I'd love a deadly dispute off the top. That's probably the best card that I have here to come back. And the second fractal token. We have lightning bolt and one unknown. Pyroblast. Let's kill a giant creature, I guess. And I'm going to sit on this future goblin because of the lightning bolt. I'm thinking that there's a chance that they might uh, like lightning bolt a blocker to get him more damage. So I'm going to keep my options open. So they're attacking. Block the fractal. They have three cards left. Dark Dweller Oracle. That was a good one. Do they try to lightning bolt here? Okay. Um, let's get in for two. They're going to target the Oracle. Let's sacrifice the Putrid Goblin. Pyroblast. That's a good one. Let's attempt to kill the... 
know what? I'm going to sacrifice the matron as well. First day. Okay. Um, let's sack the Dark Dweller. All right. So Lightning Bolt can resolve. Play land. Destroy the Fractal Token. Dispel. Ugh. So unfortunately, I don't have a Sacrifice Outlet. Or else this would be a win. I have no lessons to get. I don't think I want to discard the Putrid Goblin. Needed to find a first day. Or not a first day. A, um, what's it called? A Deadly Dispute in there. Have you seen one this game? We're 50% or a little over 50% of the way through our deck. They're going all in. All right, so we'll block an auger, and then this will block the fractal. Intra okay, so they traded an auger with the Putra Goblin, and now they can use Relic to remove uh, the Putra Goblin from the game. So they're putting me on having to draw a blocker. Yeah. Come on, Deadly Dispute. It's my best shot here. Land is not going to do it, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, we lost the 16-turn uh, the battle to Serpentine Curve. Maybe I don't know how to approach these matchups. That's entirely possible. But these first two were a slugfest and honestly kind of brutal to spend this long on a game where you don't win. Uh, we still have three more rounds. Hopefully they don't take this long. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game okay match number three we're on the draw unfortunately this is not a keep we have to take a mulligan this hand's very good it's a first day of, of uh class away from winning so we'll keep bottom of land and uh let's see what we can do here i'm also rooting for faster matchups at this point i have no interest in playing one hour matches for the rest of this uh league I don't even know what this is. They choose black, so they're Orzov. This could be a long one. Ay, ay, ay. Draw. Play the bridge, pass the turn. Okay, so it is not Orzov control. It uh, looks like just like black, white, life gain. Draw. Another prospector. We just have to find first day. Play the Ecker Wellspring. Oh, are they on gates? Wow. Okay. I, I've heard the rumors. I have not faced it myself. Let's play the Deadly Dispute, sacrificing the Wellspring. And we'll draw three. Future Goblin. Looting. Let's play the Looting to dig for first day. No such luck. Discard Mass Vandal and a Mountain. Pass the turn. We are 25% of the way through our deck already. You have a Luminarch Veteran. And another Veteran. Two cards in hand. I'll take one. I go to 18. Vault of Whispers. I'm just going to play the Ecker Wellspring and pass, and then on their turn I can cast Deadly Dispute to draw more cards. Okay, we hit it. So, I think you're one mana short from winning right now, but we definitely have it on the following turn. They're going to activate the orb. So a gauge or two basic land cards. Wait, is it two gates? Did I misread this? 
for two base Glorians cards or gate cards. So you can get two gates. That's actually better than I thought. Okay. There's a whole lot of Basilisk gates over there. Okay. You got it. 13 damage coming in hot. Deadly Dispute, Sacrificing the Icar Wellspring. And we've got it all wrapped up here. Play a land. Future Goblin. I guess there's no reason to not duress first. It's a lot of removal. Prospector. First day of class. Make infinite red mana. Okay, so this is an easy peasy win. Show them the munitions. Hopefully they concede. And they do. All right, so we will head off to the next game. They had a lot of removal there. I think based on the creatures we saw, there's some discussion on whether or not you would like the Karkwen Shaman. I'm not sure if we actually do, but I think we want the extra copies of Duress, for sure. Shave a Ball Spring, and maybe a Looting. Let's try this. All right, game two, we've opened up a decent one. We just have to find Putrid Goblin. Keep. Gate. You got it. Prospector, pass the turn. So many goblins. Ancient Den, they're passing. Aya. Prospector. Bridge pass. They have deadly disputed. Relic? That's annoying. Cat, sure. Draw, Deadly Dispute. I think we pass here. They're going to attack. I'll follow the 19. They'll go up to 20. Another gate. I'm going to cast this Deadly Dispute, sacrificing the bridge. We already have a third land. I don't know. It seems fine. You got it. Draw. Get in there. Pass the turn. Cast down. I will sacrifice this goblin and draw two cards. A little bit flooded on lands. Remove the dispute. Ouch. Squadron Hawk. Okay. So many Hawks. Draw, and we pick up another copy of Chromatic Star. I mean, just past the turn, there's nothing for us to do here. Another cast down. Okay. Remove the Deadly Dispute. So they're going to activate the gate here. Let's turn off the auto yields. I might want to cycle one of these unearths. So I think I'm going to cast one next turn, and if they want a relic, that's fine. Munitions was a good draw. Okay, looting. Let's attempt the unearth. Oh, I messed up. I should have um, played munitions first, I think. Because then they could uh, exile their cat. Well, they chose not to anyway. Makeshift munitions. Ping ping. Let's sacrifice this chromatic star. Love it. Sacrifice the chromatic star again. Kill another creature. We're a control deck. Pass. 
Sure thing. The cat's back. And a hawk. And another hawk. So we drew Goblin Matron so I can go search up the Mass Vandal to blow up the Relic. Another first day. Of course I'd like to use the Matron's ability. Alright, sacrifice this treasure for a green. Play the Mass Vandal. Target the Relic. And they will exile Relic. So if I looting into Putra Goblin, we have a win, so let's try that. That did not happen. Okay, let's kill the Sacred Cat. Pass the turn. No point in attacking. I guess I could have waited to see which creature they targeted with the gate. Yeah, that would have been better. Let's target this and sacrifice the Mass Vandal. Another Sacred Cat. Ouch, I go to 11. Draw on Earth. That actually does it. So let's bring back the Matron that can go get the... Uh, what is it called? The Putrid Goblin. So they could have removal here. And let's attempt to play a first day. And now they're dead. Okay. Uh, so we will sacrifice this Matron. Cast another first day. And now they're dead. Okay, we'll auto yield here. We already have lethal on board and the opponent concedes and we got a match win! One and two. Two rounds left. Let's see if I can get my money back. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match number four, we're on the draw again. I'm going to try this. We still need the two goblins, but having protection spell plus first day of class is obviously very strong. And we're facing burn. Not a good matchup. All right, I'm going to try to maximize my curve here, so I'm going to lead on turn one duress. What a hand. Yikes. Um, geez. I think we take the fire blast, which might seem a little bit odd, but by taking fire blast, we might be able to find an opening where our opponent's tapped out. Swiss spear, yep. And a suspended roof bolt. So we'll take two, draw, play the Icker Wellspring, Master Vandal, not what we needed. It is a big butt blocker though. I can filter Chromatic Star into it next turn. Needle drop. Yep. They have three cards in hand. Ouch. We're taking six here. I'm going to be at three. They have one card. This was a fast one. Just got pummeled. I, I guess I did ask for faster games. Draw. Matron. I don't have a, uh, a creature to remove. They use the blood token. And a fire blast. Cool. All right, so we are down a game to burn. Bring in those copies of duress, and I wonder if we want bolt or not. I don't know if we have room to actually bring in lightning bolt, or like maybe just board out Icar Wellspring altogether because this isn't a matchup that's about value. I think that's probably actually the right call. And then we can shave maybe a carnarium. Let's try this out. I'm sure I just made someone vomit in their mouth a little bit by boarding out Rakdos Carnarium. But the idea is that this is not a matchup where we have 
time is a luxury, so those sort of lands aren't as good. This is a reasonable hand. We'll keep. Okay, mountain and... I think I just want to sit on the Prospector. I don't want to play it out. Well, Darren Epicure, you got it. Draw. Duress, that was a good one. Fire it off. Fire Blast. I mean, it probably seems weird that I'm taking the Fire Blast, but I want to find a window where our opponent's tapped out that I can capitalize on. And them always having Fire Blast up sort of ruins that a little bit. They suspended a Rift Bolt. I mean, I could just kill the Epicure here. Yeah, I think I'm going to, because then they can't play the Needle Drop. I take three off Chain, you got it. Draw, another Prospector. I think I'm just going to pass. So I'll take three off Rift Bolt going to 13. And I think next turn you could reasonably play the um, the Needle Drop. But this turn, it just gives their Needle Drop a free target that's actually removal, and you don't want to play into that. Okay, so they have Chain Lightning Rift Bolt up. Play the Prospector past the turn. I don't know if you can suspend from Exile or not. Double Swift Spear. And they chain the goblin. Let's cycle. Into another unearth. No, I would not like the copy. Draw. Okay, well, she gets the goblin that we care about. So let's go get putrid. Pass the turn. Land number four. We know that they have double swift spear. Yep. They will activate a blood token, discarding Voldaren Epicure. Two cards in hand. No blocks. Draw. Hmm. All right, let's play Prospector. Future Goblin. Sacrifice Matron. Sacrifice Putrid. Cast first day. I knew it was a risk. Ah, blowout. Um. Yeah. Go get the prophecy. This comes back. Pass the turn. I have to find another first day, and I have a win. No blocks. I'm at three and they have one card. So I can play the prophecy, but I'm dead to a lot of cards. And another thing I can do is I can just unearth on the goblin matron. And then that goes to get prospector. And then I can bolt a Swiss spear on their turn. So they're going to crash in. Block. Let's see if they cast a spell. They just slow rolled the fire blast. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. So we are now one in three. I want to look at the top view and just see what they were for introduction of prophecy. Yeah, okay. One, three, one match left. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles seven days early, on top of other sweet benefits, and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. The fifth and final match. We are on the draw once again. This hand has a lot of what we're looking for. I'm pretty much leaning on the Faithless Looting to find land number two. Mountain into Voltaire and Epic here. Oh no. 
Are we going to 1 4 this? Alright, the Carnarium was a good draw. Let's loot. Discard the Deadly Dispute and a Dark Dweller. Pass the turn. Another Voldaren Epicure. Great Furnace. Okay. Good start for the opponent. We're, uh, we're losing life. Matron. Looting. Discard double Matron. Play the Carnarium. Pick up the Mountain. Pass the turn. Need to find a first day. So they're on red Blackburn. Okay, you got it. Three cards still in hand. We found the first day. I'm going to play Matron here and go find another copy of Skirt Prospector. Pass the turn. They're using a Blood Token, Fiery Temper. I go to 10. Yep. I'm dead to pretty much any burn spell here. Yeah. Too fast. Rip me. That stunk. So we're not going to board in Lightning Bolt this time, just because their deck doesn't really have good bolt targets. Like, there's no Monastery Swift Spear, that sort of thing. I'm still going to board out a couple copies of Vicar Wellspring, though. Do I want Card Clan Shaman? I don't think so. Would have been good that game, but I, I mean, that wasn't an average draw. And I am boarding out Icar Wellspring, so I think the answer is no. I don't have strong opinions on it. Game two. Sure, why not? Play a Swamp past the turn. Vault of Whispers. Lovely, another first day. Pick up the Swamp past the turn. Next turn, we'll play Goblin Matron. A Vampire's Kiss. We're at 18. Matron. Yes, let's go get Prospector. It's better to get Prospector, in my opinion, because if you happen to draw Exhum, it's better... Or, uh, I'm sorry, Unearth, it's better to have Prospector to sacrifice the Matron. All right, Dress was a fine draw. Deadly Dispute, yep. A lot of removal. Um, take the Galvanic Blast. Matron. Go get Putrid Goblin, pass the turn. They have Fiery Temper and Alms of the Vein. They discard both, so now they have two unknowns in hand. Yep. No red mana, though. So I could have an opening to win here. Nope, not that red mana. Draw. Prospector. Future Goblin. Okay. Attack the Matron. Attack the Matron. Let's try our first day. All right, sacrifice. Okay, so that, that's a good sign. Um, damn. So we sacrifice the Putrid Goblin. I have triple red. So if I introduction to prophecy into Unearth, we win. Bottom. Bottom. No such luck. Bummer. Pass the turn. Two red. Searing blaze. Sack. Yep. Draw. So now we're two combo pieces away. Let's filter this for a red and draw card. We found half of it. Dark Dweller Oracle. Play the Carnarium. Let's pick up the Swamp. 
Pass the turn. They do not attack. I think we just passed the turn here. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. Spell bomb. Oh, jeez. Yep. That's brutal. Okay, draw. Looting. Whoops, undo. Cast it. Not that good. Um, let's flash it back. Another Dark Dweller. I just have a feeling they're going to respond to this on Earth. And they do. I could have kept a mountain instead of the second on Earth. And I have to pass the turn. I have three cards in hand and blood tokens. Palms of the Vein, I'll go to six. Fill three cards in hand. I am so far away from winning. Let's sacrifice a Vault of Whispers. Play the star. Munitions. Let's kill the Voldaren Epicure, sacrificing the Chromatic Star. Deadly Dispute. I mean, I don't really have a choice. Let's just get in there. I'm at six. I'm dead to like a light breeze. They have three cards in hand, about to be four. They discarded a land. Yep, I'm at two. We went one and four. That was not a good league. Um, no excuses. I don't know if I played that well. Like, I don't feel like I made any egregious misplays, but it felt like maybe I could have played better in a few spots. I don't really know off the top of my head what those would have been, but I feel like I missed a couple opportunities throughout this league. The red matchups felt terrible. Like, I wish that I was playing Cycle Storm in this specific league because I felt like I would have had better results, but... Wow, I didn't realize that the Goblin combo deck was so bad against red decks. That's kind of alarming for me, especially when red is so good in the format right now. I appreciate you watching this. I don't really have any feedback on the deck list. I'm not an expert at this deck, so bear with me. But uh, I really do appreciate you watching. So thanks, keep storming, and have a great day. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.